Aside from being the ultimate stream box available in the market, Apple innovated so many useful features. There's so many things you can do with this amazing box. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover all the best tips and tricks as well as some hidden features you can do with the Apple TV. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with, if you have an Apple computer of any kind, you can actually mirror this or use it as an extended display. This is perfect to do and ideal to use if you have like a presentation or you just wanna show or share your screen in general. And to do this, it's extremely easy. On your Mac device, so long as the two devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, just go on the top right, on the right hand corner of your computer, go into screen mirroring, look for the Apple TV that you wanna select, and just like that, you're set. You can either go back on these two blue square icons you have the option to choose either between mirror the display or use it as a extension to your display. All personal preference and you can just reverse back to turn it off completely. Now the Apple TV remote itself actually has a lot of interesting shortcuts. And the most useful ones is this. And it doesn't matter if you have this controller or the older controller. They're practically very similar. Aside from the power button, which this one does have. If you tap and hold, this will actually turn off the Apple TV instead of having to go to the sleep option, which we'll typically do on the older controller. You just hold down the TV icon until this little menu pops up and you select sleep and this should automatically turn off the Apple TV as well as your t television. If you have it paired with your television, which I'll talk more about how to do that in a little bit. Now, if there's an app acting funny, you can always just double tap the TV icon. This will launch app switcher. Use a little slider sensor. That's also help with the controller. Select the app. Well, not actually select it, just hover over it and swipe up. It will force quit that application. So next time when you reopen it, it has to reboot again. Now for the Siri remote, you have this little arrow. For the previous generation remote, you have the little menu button. The two do the exact same thing. It's basically a back button. In an app, if you tap on it, it will take you back to the previous menu. If you press on it again, it will take you to the home menu. If you keep pressing on it, it will actually start the screensaver. And then if you hold on it, it will basically bypass everything and take it to the main, main Apple menu. Now as for the TV icon, if you tap on it, this should also take you back to the main menu. You could program the home button to do different things though, because the back button could do the exact same thing. So if you'd like to swap that TV icon to do something else, you could totally do so by going into the settings, going to remote and devices, where it says TV buttons. This is where you guys will switch between Apple TV apps or home screen. And now that we selected the Apple TV, now whenever we press on this, it will actually take us to basically a main menu of some of the shows and movies we watched previously. Basically this is a personalized menu based off of your history. Now if you think that the track speed of the Apple remote is too quick or slow, you can actually adjust this by going back in the settings, going to remote and devices, and where it says touch surface tracking, you have these three speeds to select. Play with it, find a personal preference that best suits you. But if you like to turn off the touch sensor, the gesture control entirely, you can actually turn it off right here and you can have this part turn off completely. So you have to press on it, the arrows to actually navigate on the display. And then of course down here, you can actually monitor the battery life percentage of your Apple TV remote. And remember, you can charge it back with the lightning cable, same cable you'll use to charge an iPhone. Now the Apple screensavers are really nice and pleasant to view, especially if you just want something for the background. But if you like to go back to a previous one, you can always swipe back and forth. You actually can skip through them. And if you like to customize one to make a dedicated screensaver, you could totally do that by going back into the settings, go into general, and right here you'll find screensavers. And just go into the theme, and it will show you the preview right there, and you can customize it to your own personal preference. Now since we're still in the settings, another thing you could do is enable dark mode. Just like our phone, you could also enable dark mode on the Apple TV. You just have to go into the general tab, look for appearance right here, and here you can switch it to dark mode, or you can set it to automatic where it will automatically change throughout the entire day. Now with the Siri remote, you can activate Siri by pressing the Siri icon right here on the side, or with this remote, you just press right here. Now Siri is actually quite powerful if used correctly. Some of the most useful commands that I find myself using are these. Whenever you're watching something, you can literally directly just tell Siri to skip 45 seconds or 30 seconds or 7 seconds. It can be an odd number too. 
Siri will actually do this. In addition to that, you can also ask a general questions like how's the weather and such. You'll be shocked how capable Siri is on the Apple TV. Now if there's a situation where you can't find your Apple TV remote, don't panic and there's no need to download a third party app. It's actually built into the OS of our iPhone. If you actually launch the control center, you can actually find it right here. And if you if you don't have the controller icon right here, you can always just go into your settings real quick, go into control center and look for Apple TV remote and just add it. And now you'll find it in your control center. And right here, you have the ability to select between other devices you may have in your household. We're gonna go ahead and select Apple TV. And here you'll notice we actually have the power on and off button right here. We have Siri. We have a lot of tools and basically the complete remote on our device. Go always go back and use the touch screen to actually navigate through your menus. Skip 10 seconds, repeat 10 seconds, the TV icon to go back, channels, and the volume rocker on your iPhone will actually adjust the volume on the Apple TV. Pretty neat. Now if you have an Apple Watch, you could do a very similar thing as well. And that is the remote app right here. And you have the ability to navigate the menu by using the touch screen. You have the TV icon to go back to the main menu or the back arrow as well. You can also use the now playing icon as well. This will also give you the ability to do a very similar thing. So in the now playing app on the Apple Watch, you can also pause and play, but you can actually tap the Apple icon right here to have a quicker access to the remote. Now back in the home menu, just like our iPhones, you can actually rearrange these apps. So these top apps right here are gonna be the default apps. These are the apps I personally like to keep up. The apps I like to personally keep up here are the main ones I use the most. If you like to move an app, simply just go over an app, select it, keep holding the selection until it enters wiggle mode. Once it's in wiggle mode, you can move it however you like. Now the top row is typically your favorite row, so this will be where I'll typically place my most used apps but you can rearrange it and organize it however you like. And you may have noticed I already created a folder. Yes, you can create folders. All you gotta do is just hover over an app and then a new folder will appear. You can rename it to whatever you like. And if you wish to delete an app, do the exact same thing. Just keep holding it until you see the pause and play. Press on pause and play, and now you have the additional options right here as well. Keep in mind, first party apps cannot be download, uh, deleted, I mean, but you can delete third-party apps. So the latest Apple TV is a powerful device and because of that you can actually play some very fun games and some of them can actually be paired with an actual gaming console controller like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox. If you like to pair an Xbox controller you simply just hold down the Xbox button as well as the sync button until this LED light begins flashing. To put the PS5 controller in pair mode you just hold the share icon right here and the PlayStation button until this light start flashing. When it's in pair mode then now from here all you have to do is just bring up this menu go down to where you see the controller icon and then go into the controller settings if nothing's popping up and so long as those controllers are is on pair mode it should pop up automatically like right here but typically it will show up right here on the display select it and it's connected and you're good to go just like that now if you own any modern airpods including the airpod max even some of the new Beats even support this. If you like to transmit the audio from the TV to the earbuds so it doesn't disturb other people around, you could easily do so. Do so by simply placing the AirPods in your ears and then this little icon may pop up on the side. You can follow the unscreen instructions to quickly connect to them, but if they don't, you can always just look into the AirPlay section and manually overwrite and connect them like this. Then in addition to that, once they're connected, you can actually do audio sharing as well. Just follow the unscreen instructions and it'll connect two earbuds, two devices at the same time to the unit. And yes, you do have individual volume controls for both users. And if you don't have AirPods, but you like to connect traditional Bluetooth headphones, you could totally still do that. Just go into settings, go in here, just go into the Bluetooth section, and you can select it in the newly discovered Bluetooth devices. Oh, and then if you like to mirror everything you see on your iOS device, including iPads, you can always just bring down a control center, tap these two squares right here, select the Apple TV, and you can basically mirror everything on your display to the Apple TV this way as well. Now to set up the IR abilities so the Apple TV controller can turn on and turn off the TV as well as just the audio, go into settings, go into general and where it says remote and devices, go down to where it, sees, where it says uh, home theater control. Make sure the receiver and TV is turned on. And lastly in video and audio, go in here and go down to wireless 
audio sync if you're using a third party headset this is something you want to go through and set up it uses your iphone speaker to make sure everything is properly calibrated so there's no latency whenever you're using like a third party bluetooth headset so i highly recommend doing this and the color bars well it's just color bars uh, nothing much to it now another important thing i guess i should go over is hard resetting the apple tv unit in general if you have this apple tv remote you can just hold down the menu button and a tv icon for five seconds and they'll basically reboot the apple tv unfortunately with the siri remote i'm unable to do this i tried holding down these two buttons as well i even googled it and i'm not getting the reboot menu on my on this apple tv maybe mine is just glitched but that's how you typically would reboot the apple tv other than that, you're all set. Now you are a master in terms of using the Apple TV to its full potential. If you got some good useful information on this video, you know what to do. I greatly appreciate if you actually leave this video a like as those help me out a lot. And get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. For more, maybe you want to go ahead and check out this video over here as I go through every hidden feature that you could do with a pair of AirPods Pro. In the video next to that one, that is just a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.